impression so far for War Thunder. Now, in this impression so far, I'll be only talking about so far what has been my experience in, for this game because I have not played all of it, let's say, uh, about all the different uh, possibilities that are available in this game or all the different factions that are available in this game. And I haven't played that much. I cannot really go and do a, f a full report, uh, the free-to-play report on this game. That's why I'm just going to do impressions so far to give um, pretty much a... Uh, a current uh, view of the game as far as I see it and maybe there's gonna be a few more of these videos until I actually come up with a final understanding of the game as a whole and will prepare a, a free-to-play report on this. Now War Founder came out I believe in 2015 and so maybe even before that because it was in some time for, for some time it was in a beta but now I'm just giving you impression as of now which is uh, December 2nd of 2017 this is what I see this game as and what's my experience of it and I have played mostly ground forces I haven't I, I think I only once went in an the, in the aircraft even then it was during a tank battle therefore I will be only sharing my impressions so far based on my experience of playing ground forces for the Soviet tree I played all of the tier 1 and I'm now progressing through the tier 2 as you can see, I'm also researching the tier 3 right now. What uh, I can say that I played a lot of t uh, tank for tanks because for simple reason is that if I show you uh, some of these tanks, let's, uh, as you can see, uh, well, this is a tier 1 tank. As you can see, I have uh, researched all the mo modifications possible for this tank so I have played it long enough uh, to get all that done. Also got myself all the possible unlockables such as the different uh, camo skins that you can get for playing this tank. Depending you know, on how many kills you get, they, you can unlock more and more of these camo skins. Uh, different tanks have actually different requirements. Here there's a very different requirement, you need 104 kills. Right, the pre in the other ones, the BT-7, you needed only 32 kills to get the Desert Camouflage. So I've been pretty much playing by unlocking all possible unlockables for each tank before moving on to the next one. Based on that, I can speak to a certain extent about the tanks because I've also seen, them play, seen the, the tanks being of other nations being played by other people. And I've you know seen how it's all done in battle. So far, I really, really like this game. Now, let's talk a bit about uh, some of the stuff that I didn't like in the game. The first thing is that when I came into the game, I found it slightly a bit confusing. Right? The game has a great uh, tutorial. It shows you the basics and says you this is what you do, this is what you need to do. And then and you, once you have that, you, you can go out and start playing. And there's even a mode that you can, which you can play against uh, bots. Uh, with, uh, while you have your hu other human human uh, control tanks on your side, so in you know, that way it's it's possible to learn even more. However, the issue for me was that there was uh, just not enough explanation of uh, all the stuff that I saw on the screen of the interface, and I had to pretty much explore it either myself or go on the internet and look it up. Like uh, some of the issues was that. After the match, I would tell me that, oh, here you actually earn this much of a currency, you earn this much of research points. Then I noticed that there was also research points that went towards parts of the tank that I can upgrade, right? And at the same time, there were research points that went towards researching the next tanks. Is that the same or not? I didn't have no idea. I was like, okay, so how do I earn it? Do I earn this? the research points by playing the tanks let's say but in the same column on this research tree then i can research this tank faster or is it i just you know i, I research this tank uh, not faster but i search this tank or is it that i'm earning just by playing the game it was not very clear once you play a bit uh, you start to realize some of the stuff you becomes uh, you understand the other stuff that was here was a crew training i was earning um the points, XP points for the crew, and I was asking myself, so how do I, how do I earn this? Is it specifically based on some kind of a, how I perform in battle? What do I need to do? Do I need to get kills? Do I need to get just to do something in battle? How it all works was not very clear. I had to go on, on basically on the 
wiki, I had to go on Reddit to have postings, just look up posts about people of Britain. Actually, I found myself quite often going on the internet and looking stuff up, but uh, the stuff that I now mostly look up is different tactics and what people are doing, how people are approaching the game. Based on that, I'm going and uh, I'm playing that myself. But that's, I guess, something that everybody does with any game. If once you get into it, you kind of want to go on the internet how everybody else is doing this. Now, what, uh, let's, uh, I guess, uh, let's just jump into the business model of the game and determine, because this is a free-to-play game, but is it a pay-to-win game? It's most likely what people are mostly, uh, mostly usually concerned about, the free-to-play games, and I would say that this is not a pay-to-win game. It has some of the skip-to-play mechanics, but not that much. Now, what does a premium account or premium currency gets you? Premium currency is this one. It's a golden eagle. There's also a, a premium research points that you earn, but you need the golden eagles to convert to normal research points. That's what at least uh, my understanding is. Maybe not completely right. I did not look into that because when I was playing this, because I'm playing this for a free-to-play report purposes, I'm playing this without using any premium currency, anything premium, anything that I have to put down real-world currency into the game for I will determine if this uh, game is actually worth putting that money into it, right? I don't want to dump money in and say, now it's fun. Well, that makes no sense. It's fun now because I dump money into it. Is it is it fun if I didn't do that? Because that's the first point of attraction. First, I need to know that the game is fun, then I'll dump in money into it, right? Or maybe not. It depends, it, again, it depends on uh, what the game has to offer for me for the real-world currency. And what this uh, game has to offer for real-world currency is the following. It has premium vehicles. Now, this is not a pay-to-win. You know, some games premium vehicles, uh, something like this, would be the pay-to-win mechanic. Because these vehicles will be overpowered or something like that. In this case, they are not overpowered. Actually, you'll find that... Um, like this one is literally just a different skin for the T26. I think all the characteristics are the same. In some cases, the characteristics would be slightly different. One characteristic has been raised, the other one has been lowered. lowered. So it's not exactly making it, it, this uh, tank any way any superior by maxing its stats or something like that to make it so that it dominates the battlefield. No. It's just a different way to play. All these tanks are different way to play. They offer a more variety. Actually, this one is actually a T3, what's called, it's called here. It's actually a German Panzer III tank that you just can play in the Soviet lineup. That's all there is to it. This it's not it's not even anything anything different than that. Now what I can tell you is another reason that I can prove uh, I can actually support my idea this is this vehicles are not all part because I played against these vehicles. I've seen them being played and I was able to shoot them easily with what I had in as a normal researchable vehicles and you know they shot me too and they destroyed me so they're not exactly underpowered either. They're just there. If you notice all the vehicles actually have uh, these numbers under them. 1.3, 1, 2, 2.7. This is a battle rating of each vehicle. This is where the matching, as far as I'm, I've been able to find on the internet, is how the matching works. It matches uh, vehicles that have similar battle rating. So if uh, so, if you're gonna get this premium vehicle, you're not gonna be most likely facing something like this guy. Most likely, you'll be fighting against something with a closer battle rating, like a T70, T50, something along those lines. Like even the tier two tanks will be eligible because. They have a similar battle rating. Now it's possible again. It's possible to see this guy because if I'll say I have a, here in my lineup, I put this guy into my my lineup, it will match me based on the fact that the mo all my tanks, the highest battle rating I have is 2.3, so it will match me based on that battle rating. But if I have one tank that's extremely low, it's still there, and so I can actually choose to play it against a higher battle rating tanks. But that's you know it's up to you if you want to do that. So. What else does a premium currency get you? Well, premium currency gets you hints, basically. If you look here, there's a different camos that are available here that you can get. 
these guys are only can be purchased for premium currency. Now, this ones, the other set, the Winter Forest and Desert camels, can be actually the, achieved by just playing the game. You can see it says, you need to defeat 39 players to get this camel for the desert. That's what I did. That's how actually I played the game. To, I would play the game until I get all the camels. Which tank, because that, uh, that, that would be, I guess, all the possible achievement that I can reach with this tank in a way. And so that's how I marked my uh, transfer transition between one tank to another. Once I researched, I achieved all this, uh, I unlocked all these unlockables, as I guess I should better say. I moved on to the next tank right after from that. Right? Now, it varies from tank to tank. Here's a different one. I just recently got the Desert Camo. This is a tier 2 tank. And you can see that I had to kill 104 players here. I, my understanding is that higher I go in the research trees, the more kills I need to get in order to research this camo. Other stuff that you can get in the customization is calls. The calls uh, here, some of them are just locked in, like here. You can uh, get them, just so all you need to do is uh, complete some missions. Uh, uh, there's a uh, game player missions, I haven't tried them yet. Uh, or you can. Uh, Kill so many players again. That's that's another way. But there's also a such thing as here. Um, not loading fast enough. Come on. Here. Some of this stuff I can buy to get it. Get faster. Or I can just play the game again and I'll, I'll unlock them. So there is a possibility. Not all of them could be unlocked by playing the game. Some of them you have to buy. Well, you know, fine. It's cosmetic. It doesn't change anything. If you really want to play with the insignia of certain um, tank unit from the you know World War II, uh, well, there you go. This would be the stuff for you know the stuff that you want to pay for. Other stuff you can get is something called the decorations, right? You can get uh, you can put them on the tank again. Does not do anything except it's uh, literally cosmetic stuff. And as you can see, actually, some of them are unlockable. I just discovered this earlier today when I was you know, doing a, a pre-run for this uh, video. I was going through this. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I actually apparently unlocked the stuff and I can put it on my tank. I had no idea. Would I put them on the tank? I don't know. I, just, I don't see any reason to. I might just do it for the, well, you know, for the giggles and it's uh, kind of interesting. Maybe. So... That's the other stuff that you can pay for. Now, as far as my understanding is, I looked into how much the premium currency costs. It's 150 golden eagles per one USD dollar. US, well, per, per one US dollar, right? So in that uh, case, as you can see that, you know, this is 500. So it'll cost about $4 to get, right? Um, Let's go back to tanks, and you can see that uh, actually the premium tanks are pretty expensive. If you think about uh, you know, how much this is cost, uh, once you just divide all this amount by 150 and see how much it costs in dollars. Now, if you buy more currency, uh, the Golden Eagles in bulk, uh, it, it will be cheaper as far as I uh, saw the table, the premium currency. But again, uh, okay, so it's, you know, it might, might throw a few dollars off, but still a good, good amount. So... I'm not sure how much of a rich person you need to be in order to buy all these premium vehicles. No, you cannot get them if you have a premium account. Don't get access to them. You have to still pay for it. The premium account will give you ability to earn research points and the in-game currency, the silver here, the silver lines, faster. That's all it is. So this is more of a pay-to-skip mechanic there for the... Uh, for if you use a premium account now well you can also use again for modifications if you want to research um this guy uh, modifications faster as you can see i can pay premium currency and move up faster and to research this stuff so again a pay to skip mechanic uh another thing i can accelerate training by using uh, a premium currency now this might might sound like uh, a pay to win mechanic because what's happening is here is that I'm researching stuff that makes uh, 
some aspects of my tank faster because well, it kind of says it's a crew, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not specific to a certain person. It's more specific to overall crew, overall crew of the tank. So it affects the tank's performance overall. And now it's transferable. Once I, you know, I transfer a crew from one tank to another, that's part. It's I get the same benefits on that in that tank. And what difference here is that you get uh, you. Turret moves a bit slightly faster, right? You you might be able your uh, your, car uh, your crew is able to identify distances better. So it does sound like if I'm you know push this forward using a premium currency, this will be a pay-to-win mechanic. But these are very minor modifiers. They do not in any way make it a, a game-breaking uh, mechanic. Does not make me any way. You know, if somebody going up to me who have all that stuff research, that's not like they're going to be dominating. I have not experienced that. Yes, it becomes like, oh, oh, well now, I, you know, it's like, it's literally like less than a half a second less, maybe at uh, some point, it's like my turret takes it to rotate to point at the enemy or to reload the shell. It does not really impact the game fundamentally. And playing the game, you can still always get that stuff. Focus on it and uh, research it and you still be able to be as good. I found that this game is more about positioning your tank, about moving properly, than you know, having that uh, type of um, tank and tank exactly facing each other and who's going to be first one to reload the shell and fire. That happens, but extremely rarely. Usually, it's who's able to position the tank better and who's able to aim for the parts, the weak spots in the tank and destroy them. Now, another reason why I think I think this game is not paid to win is because it does not pressure me to get any of that premium stuff. I don't feel like I need it. it, it the game is pretty generous with its uh, non-premium currency. You get it for playing the game itself. It's pretty easy to get a good amounts. I think after I've completed the tutorial I started with like a 300,000 and now I'm, I can see I'm at 733,000. And this is after I purchased all the tier 2 tanks and that actually cost quite a few, quite a lot of it. I was able to climb back up again, recover all that amount. Now the, you might say that, oh that's because you're grinding a lot when you're playing to get all those unlockable uh, uh, skins for the tank. Yes, that could be adding to the fact that I'm, uh, I'm playing the game and I'm and uh, I'm getting a lot of money because I'm playing that, but it doesn't feel like a chore to me. I enjoy playing each tank. Each tank has its own type of uh, eccentricities, its own specifications that allow me really enjoy playing. It's like, okay, yeah, this is what I can do. No, this is something that, you know, I shouldn't have done with this tank. Quite clearly, this was a bad idea if, you, if somebody shoots me when I do something completely incorrect. It has this kind of a feel to it. Another, another thing I guess I failed to mention that I should uh, talk about um, talk about uh, mysticals. That's camouflage. It's another camo. So you can put bushes around your vehicles. It's a standard military camouflage. Like, and uh, the first time I saw it, people using it, that's the first time I started thinking like, oh, is this game a pay to win? Because if you buy this stuff, put it on your tank all around you, you might not be recognized in the foliage. Now, this especially specifically applies to games such as the simulator games or realistic games, where your tank does not is not shown to the enemy unless you guys are fighting each other and shooting if, and hitting each other actually with shells or with machine guns. So, I was thinking, is that it? So now is that actually a to win mechanic? And uh, did some research, find out I found out that that's not the case. What will happen? Is that if you're close enough to the tank and you're close enough to recognize that it's a tank you will see this stuff drawn on it by the game if a tank is really far off the enemy tank and has all this stuff on it the game will not draw it for me so I'll be able to see the tank as is as if it did not have any of the stuff on it I'm able to aim it and shoot it as as if it never had any decorations on it any of this any of these bushes 
So in that way, it's not a pay to win. I only had one time an experience where a guy really stood among the foliage very close to me and I did not notice him and he shot me. He had that foliage also on his tank. Now, at the same time, I had plenty of enough experiences where I literally just rolled by an enemy tank and did not notice it. And the guy shot me. So I cannot really say that that one time was because of this foliage that the tank had put on it. That's what made it... Uh, you know, un unrecognizable from that did not allow me to see it among the trees. Because I've done it with other tanks, but uh, you know, I had the same experience with uh, tanks that did not have this. Now, the camo is important in the game, it actually does make you less visible, especially again in realistic and uh, simulator battles where your location is not shown to the enemy, it does make you less uh, visible. The question is then that, what about this premium camo that's available? Not this one, this is unlockable, but this guys, tricolor camos, right? Uh, what about them? Well, I haven't run into anybody who was using them yet, so I cannot really say that uh, it really makes a difference. Because it most like, it might it might be just as effective as a normal camo that, I, that you can unlock. But they are effective. Doesn't mean that it makes somebody invisible, really, no, it's still possible to see the tank, uh, you can recognize them, especially when they're moving. On a realistic in simulation, that's how I pretty much you do it. You recognize the tanks, but when they start to move, you're like, oh, there's a spot that's moving, in, moving on the screen, let's look into it. Oh, yes, that's a tank, let's shoot it. So, I think, uh, given that, uh, let's show you some gameplay. Now, it's pretty easy to find a game, especially if you're playing arcade. This one, uh, the one that you play against bots might not be as easy to find specifically during the weekdays. On the weekends, there's no issues. I never had any issues with their arcade. Never had any issues uh, getting a uh, getting game or waiting for too long. The realistic battles sometimes uh, during the week you're gonna be waiting for some time, like maybe a minute, to get into the game. Sometimes maybe more. So, given that this situation, I would say it depends. I guess uh, how you play. Since I play mostly on the weekends, to me it's not a problem. But I think the arcade mode is much easier to do if you never played the game. So let's go into that. And let's, uh, it's, it's, I'm hoping that I'm going to jump quick, quite quickly right now in the game. I'm not going to spend too much time sitting in the, in the queue right now. Not too many seconds. Sh shouldn't be an issue. Already, right there. So 23 seconds. I waited. That's actually pretty long for the weekend. Not sure what's happening. Uh, here's one of the maps, and uh, the difference between arcade and realistic, as I mentioned earlier, is that you do not get shown to the enemy because of the mini map, your positions, and you do not get to see when you aim at the enemy tank. You don't get to see where it tells you. The game will not tell you. Oh, by the way, this is a weak point for the tank. It's none of that. Let's take a T28 actually, uh, let's take a T80 that has a uh, inter camo. And let's go. The other, there's uh, other differences between arcade and realistic, uh, such as uh, tank physics. Uh, the arcade has an uh, easier tank physics, tanks move faster, turrets rotate faster than realistic one does. Uh, so, usually the issue for me is that when I jump between the two boats, is that I need to to play a few games before I actually Attack remember that the fact that I do not need to do some Attack things like right now I just checked my binoculars. I do not need to do that in a in the in arcade mode. I need to do that in a realistic mode because in order to see the enemy tanks in the distance. Here I see I can actually see here the tank is being pointed out to me. I can aim at it, but it's behind behind the hill. So let's uh, wait for it to come out. Right there it is. Right there. Let's see if I can uh, still under behind the hill. Okay, let's get some ideals. I'm gonna switch ammo because I need some armor piercing because it looks like there's a few heavier tanks there. As you see, if you see, okay, you see the green spot appear on, and I'm not hitting anything. I think they, my guys, got him. And. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, there's a T-34. Now that's gonna be a bit of a difficulty. 
Ah. Roger that. See if we can corner the guys from the side. As in real life, shooting tanks in the face is not a great idea. You want to get uh, get at them from the side. Now there's a control points in the game which controlling them actually allows you to win the battle, but you can also shoot all the enemy tanks and that's how you can win. Uh, let's see, I don't want to be on top of it because my gun depression sucks. And this guy hasn't learned that his gun depression is not great. Right there! Ah! Somebody is shooting. But I can throw artillery at him. Alright, and I'm out. So, not the greatest uh, performance, uh, I guess, uh, but what are you gonna do? I haven't played arcade in a long, long time. I mostly play realistic. I find that realistic is, uh, is more enjoyable for me. I find the whole idea of uh, finding that spot and not ordering the enemy and uh, shooting them while they haven't seen even you. A uh, way more enjoyable experience. Alright, let's get uh, this furry. Find ourselves a nice little open plane so we can shoot a lot of enemies. Alrighty, where are you? Some of them, some of them have to be here. There is an M24 there. I think somebody got him. Alright, see, it shows me a big point, uh, and there you go, I got a critical hit on this guy because I shot him in a weak point. There, a tank destroyed. Okay, and apparently when I avenged, uh, so I guess maybe it was the enemy tank that uh, killed me, that, uh, that's why I avenged myself. Oh, okay, somebody's throwing artillery at me, I should get out because I'm in open cockpit tank, and that's usually is a bad idea sitting there. Okay, see if I can get somebody here. No. Oh, 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 uh, the air beyond the hill. Now, I only get three respawns in arcade mode. Uh, the realistic mode will actually give you respawns depending on your performance and number of tanks in your lineup. So, you're able to shoot more tanks and do you much better at it, so you'll get more respawns. That's how, that's how the game works for realistic. For to the arcade, uh, it's, it's just a uh, simple three response and that's it. Once you kill, that's it. Now, what you can see is that people actually can play aircraft uh, in this game and support the tanks from the air. You can drop bombs, you can just uh, strafe tanks, allow people to, you know, point out. Alrighty. Hopefully that gets a hit, it does. Another hit, but uh, I'm not I'm not penetrating the guy through. See, the issue here is not to... There's no hit points on this tank. What I need to do is to... Is to actually kill the crew of the tank. Or burn the tank down. In this case, they killed my crew. And uh, that's the result of it. Uh, actually, he was shooting with the other cannon, but most likely because he's, I did disable his main one. So right there, he killed my crew. That's what kills my tank. Not how many hits I take. If I hit, if, you know, if I get hit on the tank, but it's uh, nowhere vital, nothing happens. Hitting, hitting the engine in the tank, of course, will stop the tank from moving. I have to repair it. There's a, a whole thing for that. This is killing a crewman, depending what kind of crewman that is. Again, will uh, we'll either stop the tank from moving because that crewman is a driver, or if uh, if it's a crewman that's killed is a is a is a gunner, the tank will stop being being able to shoot for a minute. While the crew changes places and to uh, to allow it to to move to allow the new uh, person on the crew uh, to stand in and now perform these actions. 
Uh, Alright, so this is the last tank. I am not think I'm gonna last. This one is not exactly my greatest. I have not researched actually a lot of stuff for it. Got a hit on him, but am I gonna get anything here? No. I'm not sure if I'm. Let's keep the pressure on. Victory is close. Other tank actually have ability to shoot at aircraft. There. Have a. Full capabilities to shoot at the aircraft. Alrighty, let's see if I can corner somebody. Right there, critical hit. And somebody shot. Uh, okay, that Panzer. Or shot my uh, gunner so I can't shoot now see my turret does not rotate until the crew changes in and there is my turret now rotating I can actually rep reposition the turret and, uh, to shoot at the enemy now I think I'm pretty sure this game is about to end uh, here we are I shot too fast but somebody actually shot them so that saved me Otherwise, I would have been dead. There we go. Got him. Got another one. Yes. Keep it up and victory will be ours. Alright, we're actually doing pretty well. I didn't expect this kind of performance from this tank. And I'm burning, I don't have any extinguishers, so I'm gonna get killed. So that's it, uh, this, as I said, there's only three respawns uh, for me available Another after this. I can sit there and watch um, my teammates play, or in most cases you can just pretty much jump out from the game right there. It's gonna tell me, um, here, return to the hangar. Oh, and we actually won, our team won the game, so I don't need to and go out but that's another option for me if i lost and uh, all my response i can just completely jump out of the game go back to the hangar and uh and play and, and go into another game it doesn't you know i don't have that limit here here i'm, I'm buying uh, modifications here but i research and i'm just saying okay now i want to research this one because i didn't have any extinguishers that actually was a reason i was not able to on playing my tank burned down right uh, right there as you can see i got pretty good uh, amount of uh, money out of this uh, playing this game right now you know this uh, this one match and that's how i, I earn my, my pretty much money and that's how you earn the modifications that's actually turned out to be a pretty good demonstration of uh, the game itself all right and uh, there's also some other stuff here um not exactly fully figured out that thing yet what does it do? But I all I know is that if I click here, it seems to give me stuff. <laughs> so that's all I know. Uh, but what it does, it actually grant me specifics. I have not figured out, and what's the advantages of that? I have not figured out. So that's all you know for now. Thanks for listening. And that has been my uh, impression so far for War Thunder, ground vehicles.